Welcome back everyone to another downward day. And yesterday, I was really feeling it. I was in the eye of the spiral. Not a good day for me. Not a good day at all. I basically had to kiss goodbye to a large sum of money. Misfortune. Misfortune is the theme of today's video and more so how to deal with it. How to, um, how to get back up after you get knocked down and kicked in the teeth. So misfortune can manifest itself in a variety of different ways. You could deal with minor grief, major grief, loss of money, loss of a loved one, loss of a family pet, car problems, house problems, medical health problems. So these are the grand setbacks of life. These are the big hurdles. These are the big hurdles that are so tall that you trip and fall over yourself and you have to get back up. And everyone has different ways of dealing with them. For me in particular, I like to turn on my GoPro and complain on the internet. But I understand that's not exactly a realistic outlet for many of you. So I guess I wanted to just take this time to share some more universal ways to maybe get out of the depths of despair that misfortune can lead us to. So I guess first and foremost, I feel the need to state this, and that's that it's perfectly valid and reasonable to feel upset, to feel anger, depression, anxiety. It's reasonable. Don't let people tell you that it's unreasonable or, or that you're just making a big deal out of nothing because th that's not how our emotions work. Trust me, if I could undergo a big setback and not feel bad about it, I, I would definitely choose to do that. I would definitely choose to not feel the way I feel after having to deal with a major problem, after having a bunch of crap suddenly placed on my lap to just sift through and deal with without any warning whatsoever. Trust me, I would like to feel better. We would all like to feel better, but, but the fact of the matter is our emotions, they just come out. They're, they're just a product of the situation. There ain't no controlling them. Some people's emotions come out more severely than others. Some people are better at controlling them and dealing with them. But, but when you're speaking about the raw emotions that come out in the heat of the moment, you're just dealing with intuition. You're, you're dealing with like the subliminal stuff that can't really be controlled by our front brains. It stems from something a lot more primal, a lot more instinctual. So look, chances are, the majority of you out there, if you get kicked in the teeth, if you just wind up with this big problem that sets you back months or even years, you're going to feel upset about it and it's reasonable to feel that way. Other people around you are not going to enjoy it because they don't want some guy bumming them out, some guy bringing down the mood, but it's reasonable to be upset and that's, that's a conflict you're going to have to deal with when you get set in a really bad mood as a result of misfortune. The people around you, close to you in your personal life are not gonna to wanna to deal with the same emotional baggage. They don't wanna have their mood corrupted by your now extremely foul mood. So that's a balancing act you have to deal with. You, you, have, to try, you have to try in your moment of pain and suffering to not inflict it as much on the people around you. So you, you, have, to, you have to be cognizant of that. You have to be cognizant of the fact that other people close to you in your life, while they do care about you, they should care about you, they're not really going to want to sink down to your level of emotional despair. It's, it's taxing, it takes a lot of energy, and there, there may be little conflicts of interest, little, little moments where it's hard to develop empathy specifically through that. So it's a balancing act for sure. You can't just push your problems on the people close to you. They're going to want to help you, but you, you also can't expect them to be th these emotional sponges for all of your heartbreak and, and to expect them to just sit there and listen to you and, and just agree with everything you have to say because you will be in a foul emotional state and people don't want to go through life like that. It's exhaustive. It takes a lot of energy. So you, you got to at least have somewhat of an awareness and it may be harder. It may be harder to think clearly because you will be incensed or depressed or anxious or however you emotionally process misfortune. So it's important at a very basic fundamental level to channel 
your behavior in a way so that when you eventually come out of it, you haven't hurt the people around you. That's just very important. And as we'll get into later, a support system of people around you is eventually one of the key components in getting out of it. So you don't want to burn them. You don't want to burn people with your emotional problems. But at the same time, there will come moments when people act dismissively of your emotional state. And that is where I think you should try to stand up for yourself a bit more, or at least not be persuaded into bottling up your rage, into just putting on this, uh, this insincere smile, into pretending like everything is okay. That, that's not how you deal with problems. It's gonna come out eventually in one way or another. And typically, the more you bottle something up, the more you re repress your negative emotions, it will tend to come out in much more severe, eruptive ways down the line. That, that is my philosophy on dealing with things. So I say, yes, it's good. It is good to express your discontent. It is good to express your displeasure temporarily while you're going through it. It is good to express it. It is good to let it out. Just make sure, just make sure you do so in a way that is not extremely foul and abrasive to the people around you to where your likability and relationships will be damaged and compromised. You gotta, you gotta be able to channel, channel the outward expression of discontent enough so that it, it's tolerable, it's at least tolerable to the people around you. But it's good to express it. I've always said it's good to let it out because this is how you work through the problem. You must, at least for the time being, mentally confront the problem. Now, I think where a lot of people go askew is that they tend to fixate on the problem for a very long, very long time. And maybe for some people, that's what's necessary. But you don't want to get stuck. You don't want to get stuck in the loop of this negative problem just pinging around in your head. It's exhausting. It will stress you out, cost you some sleep, possibly. You have to confront the problem mentally, but there, there has to be some kind of progression. You don't want to find yourself in just a loop of saying like, oh no, this happened, oh, this happened. Oh, this. And um, a lot of that in my experience comes from this idea of wanting to return to the place you were before. The unbothered, peaceful place you were moments before disaster. And I think it's important to accept that you are in a new state now and, and it's it's good to try to it's good to try to wrap your head around this quickly I'm not saying you have to do it instantaneously there's, there's a process to it there's a lot of mental stuff that has to be worked out it takes energy it takes effort but you have to be actively thinking about and solving the problem before you can reach that point before you can reach that point of acceptance you know commonly cited in psychiatry are the five stages of grief Denial, anger, bargaining, depression, acceptance. And while in my personal anecdotal experience, the order of those events in the middle can be subject to change, or entirely, entirely new behaviors that are not even listed there can manifest. In general, the end point tends to be the same, acceptance. You must accept the place you are in. Yesterday, I basically had to kiss tens of thousands of dollars goodbye. That, that is the reality. It's not coming back. It's something I could have maybe possibly had a week ago or even a month ago, but it's gone now. And, and accepting that it is gone and not trying to be in the state by saying like, oh, I could do this, I could do that. All I have to do is do this to get the money back. After a while, you have to know when to cash your chips out of the casino. Even when you're losing, when you're losing, you still have to know when to cash your chips out because there are certain situations you'll find yourself in. You have to be aware that they are untenable, that the situation has permanently changed to where you are in a worse state. But you have to use that. You have to use that knowledge and think about it objectively. Think about the reality of the situation because if you continue operating on this imaginary fantasy that what you had before is still present, what you had before is still attainable. You will be unable to plan your course of action effectively. You must, you must in a short term period of time, accept the reality of the situation. 
accept the objective nature of the place you're in, the position you're in, and how to continue, how to move on, how to get out of it. And if you're stuck at the bottom of a pit, it's gonna be a hell of a lot harder to get out when you're blindfolded and pretending that you're not in the pit at all. You must accept that you're in the pit and that you gotta get out. You are in a lower position than what you once were. And too bad, it sucks. It sucks, it can be unfair. You can be indignant about it, angry. You can harbor resentment and it's fine. It's fine to still have those emotions, but the primary, primary thing you gotta do is just accept the objective reality of the situation. Because without that, you're gonna be unable to actually move on. You have to get used to the idea of sacrifice. You have to get used to the idea of letting things go. Just let go. And then you will be on the path to recovery. But you can't keep clinging on to these ideas from the past to, to this place, this better place you were existing in, and maybe as, as early as 24 hours ago. You have to accept that that is gone and that your situation has changed. And with that, you can finally start progressing to some sort of solution and, and actually feeling better about the problem and moving on. So once you have accepted the situation for what it is and, and you are in touch with reality, you can then start to move forward to minimizing the problem. Now this can come through just either physically addressing the problem, physically solving what has gone wrong, seeing if anything is fixable or salvageable, except that it's not gonna be going back to the way it was, but maybe certain positive elements can come out of it. Certain things can be rescued from the brink of the abyss. And for me, the process of dealing with significant problems always comes in two phases. There is the physical problem itself that has to be solved, and then there is all the mental and emotional baggage that comes with it. You will experience really negative emotions, and just generally, general people out there, depending on the nature of your problem, you will experience like some of the worst emotions you will feel in any sort of long form time span. You will be forced to confront just really dark aspects of yourself, of what you think about the nature of society, the nature of reality, the, the nature of the institutions we've put in place around us. You will have to get down and dirty in just the ugliest parts of the human psyche. Figuratively speaking, a bunch of storm clouds are gonna appear all around your head and they're gonna block your vision. They're gonna form this cloudy, misty miasma around you and it's gonna become more difficult to navigate, more difficult to think clearly. There's gonna be swirling winds and lightning and thunder all around you. That's what it's gonna feel like. You're gonna feel this, this pain, this toxicity in the pit of your stomach. While, while you may be in no physical pain, you will feel something. Like how it usually feels for me is that there's like, there's like a warm knife jabbing me in the pit of my stomach. That's how it feels. And everyone's gonna feel a different way. That, that's how anxiety manifests itself to us. So as soon as the problem becomes known, as soon as that situation gets thrust upon you, you are basically gonna be like pushed out of an airplane into a swirling, never-ending tempest, seemingly never-ending. And you will be confused, disoriented. You won't know where to go. It's gonna be as if you're in free fall. Like this, this is what the downward spiral is. You will be in the downward spiral. And it's gonna take discipline. It's gonna take restraint. It's gonna take a lot of thinking and meditation to sort of center yourself and stop you from just spiraling out of control. You need to put on the brakes. You need to really stop and think. Like, take a break. Take, take off work. Just take time for yourself. This is what I always have to do. I, I need at least several hours to myself where when you're in that state when you have just been pushed over the abyss and it feels like you're free falling and it feels like you can't gather your sense of direction, you need to take some time for yourself. This is just how I process things in my personal experience where I need to take time for myself. I need like several hours where I am alone with my own thoughts. It can be tempting. It can be tempting to go out immediately to other people, but before that can happen, you need, you need to make sure that you are in an acceptable state. 
an acceptable state to go out and not hurt the people around you by being extremely caustic. Before you go out, before you go out and even consider talking to other people, you need to make sure that you have regained your sense of self. You need to make sure that you are not in a completely disastrous state. Take the time to be alone with yourself, alone with your own thoughts, and focus and meditate and really, really get a grasp, get a grip. That's an age-old expression and it rings true. You need to get a grip of your situation and then once that is achieved, once you have achieved stability, once you no longer feel like you're free falling or spiraling out of control, once the winds and the tempest around you have died down a bit, that is when you can go out and talk to other people. And talking to other people, that is a valuable step. That's a valuable step for myself and how I deal with problems. But in general, overcoming a lot of these problems, a lot of these setbacks and misfortune, it can be greatly sped up with a support system around you. Now I know we live in the 21st century and a lot of people out there are lonely. We live in the age of loneliness. You gotta find someone, okay? You need to find like someone you can confide in. It can be an online friend if you don't know anyone in real life for some reason. Parents, if you're hopefully not estranged from your parents, siblings, coworkers. Just, you need someone will listen to your emotional problems. You don't have to place your problems on them. You don't have to place them on their shoulders and make your problems their problems. But you need someone who can develop some sort of mutual empathetic understanding for the situation you're going through. Preferably older people. Preferably people with more life experience, more wisdom. That is usually a very valuable resource for figuring things out and getting your bearings. So once you have gathered yourself and gathered your own independent thoughts, it's very important to go out and confer with other people because what tends to happen if you just stay alone is that, like I said earlier, these ideas just keep pinging around in your head. You can get stuck in a cycle. You can just get stuck in these infinite cycles of thought that just drive you crazy. You can almost become this prisoner inside your own head, so to speak. And if that ends up happening, if you can feel yourself just sinking further and deeper into your own negativity and rage, it's important to get second opinions. It's important to add additional nuanced inputs to the system that can help ping you out of it. You need to just get off the cyclical form of thinking, the cyclical negative form of thinking and introduce other voices. And it can still be negative, but it will at least force progression. That is generally the primary thing you want while working through a problem. Progression. Just gradually, incrementally wind up in a different place than what you were before. You just want to progress in any direction. It can be any direction. You can, you can reset the direction once you're out of the thing, but you've got to get out of the pit. It doesn't matter which way you get out of the pit. You've got to get out of it. And that requires putting in the effort and mental energy to climb out. The worst thing you can do is just stay in the center of the pit forever. For an indefinite period of time, just stay in the middle, not doing anything. Even if it comes slowly, you want progression. You want to feel like you are going to a linear endpoint that, that is different from where you currently are. And in my experience, talking to other people, talking to people close to you with whom you have a solid emotional connection people who will listen to you and give you good insight and actually take the time to want to sort of steer you in the right direction. And that's generally what it is. They're not going to pull you. They're not going to lift you up and do all the heavy lifting. But what they will do is steer you. They will spin you around, correct your orientation so that you are headed in the right direction. So consult other people. Use their wisdom. Ask them questions. Ask them if they've been in a similar situation. Ask them if they have been in the situation, how they got out of it, or what to expect. Even if the news is not good, if the prognosis is not necessarily positive or uplifting, you will have a better sense of what to expect. You will no longer feel like you're just alone in a storm. You'll have a buddy. You'll have someone, someone you can at least bounce ideas off and get a better sense, a better idea of what to do next. 
And when I personally deal with situations like this, what tends to happen is that the more people I talk to about it, the problem itself starts to shrink. It starts to become a smaller part of my overall psyche. The storm clouds, they get less dark, they start to fade away a bit, and it becomes more manageable. It's an important philosophical thing to achieve with a support system by realizing that you are a smaller part of a larger system. And by realizing that you are a smaller part and that there's other people, they've dealt with their own problems, they've dealt with similar circumstances, they, much like yourself, are going through it, or they've gone through it, or they're, they're just as much of a main character, a protagonist in the game of life as you, you start to gather a better sense of just the scope of things, the scope of the world. And you start to minimize your own role and your own experience, and as a consequence, your problem feels smaller. It, it becomes more manageable. By minimizing your sense of self, by comparing other perspectives, by realizing that other people have dealt with similar things, and gaining empathy, gaining wisdom, gaining advice, that will help make the problem more manageable. That will begin the process of packing it up, packaging the problem, compartmentalizing it into something that is workable and understandable. And that ultimately is the end goal which you're trying to work towards when getting over something. You need to make the problem smaller. Don't expect it to ever go away. It will still be a part of you. It will still be burned into your memory and it will be something that you will forever access in your head and have negative emotions because of it. It is very difficult to take a major problem where you feel like you've been wronged, you feel extremely bad, you feel this tempest of negative emotions. It is extremely difficult to take that and turn it around into some kind of positive experience, to look back on it lightly. Now chances are, in almost all cases, whenever you deal with an extremely negative circumstance, you will forever look back on it negatively. That's part of the ideas you learn from acceptance. The problem will never go away. It will be a part of you. It is with you. What you can control is the scope and the scale of the problem. You can take this large problem and just minimize it, pack it down. It's still going to be there. It's going to be with you, but you can make it smaller. You can make it a less impactful and influential part of your overall experience. And achieving that requires perspective. You have to look at different viewpoints, different ideas, different points of view. Recognize that you are almost certainly not alone. Other people have dealt with it. Other people have solved it. Other people have learned to live with it. And once you start to gather and achieve this greater sense of perspective, that is when the problem all of a sudden starts to fade away, become a little bit more distant, distant in the back of your head. And as you start to put distance between yourself, between your mental state and the problem, the beams of sunlight will start to once again shine through the storm clouds. You will start to once again realize the positive aspects of your life, which previously, once you were going through it, once you were in the eye of the storm, were very hard to see, were obscured by your negative, sour, emotional state. Once the problem starts drifting further away, you get to put distance between yourself and the problem. The actual nice parts of your life and your sense of self will start to return, and, and that is what you need to eventually reach. That is the end point. Just grab on. Grab on to these aspects of your life that are positive. You won't get there immediately. Some people it's gonna take weeks, months to get over something. But eventually you're gonna have to put that distance between you and the problem. And it will no longer, no longer have the intense gravitational pull over your life once you've moved beyond it, once you've moved past it. It's gonna be there, it's gonna be a part of you, it's gonna be a part of your life story. But you can make it smaller. You can make it less influential on your day-to-day -day life, on your mood, on your emotional state. And that is what's gonna to have to be achieved before you can move on and go back to living your regular life. So I'm currently driving down to the airport ahead of a big trip, big filming trip I have planned. And this big setback, this big problem I experienced happened 
just yesterday, right as I was ready to embark on this adventure. And many people may think about that and look at it like, well, that sucks. Now, now the entire experience, the entire trip is going to be tainted by this misfortune. But I started looking at it in a different way where I'm actually glad, I'm actually a bit relieved that I can go out to this different environment. I can physically put myself in this different otherworldly space that is just unfamiliar than what was so triggering about the problem in the first place. I'm putting physical distance between myself and the problem and I can already feel myself putting up the distance mentally. The problem is becoming minimized. So if you're having a particularly bad time, a rough time, you're finding it very daunting, very challenging to actually move on, this can be something that can help you. Put physical distance between you and the problem. Just start driving somewhere, drive someplace else, drive hours and hours away. Maybe then by entering a new physical space, you can actually move on to a new headspace. And thus far, that definitely seems like what I'm experiencing right now. We're coming down, coming down from the problem. I, I was very upset yesterday. It sucked. It sucks to be upset. But you can take steps as long as you remain disciplined and make sure that you are working towards a solution and that you are progressing. You can at least have some kind of confidence, some kind of solace in the fact that things are improving. You're taking steps, and it could even be baby steps to get out of the pit. And while you're in the moment, you're disoriented, it may seem never ending, the problem will end. The problem will either end, or I guess you will end. But it's much more likely that the problem ends. And as you overcome more problems, and you prove to yourself that even significant major setbacks, major hurdles where you fell down and got kicked in the teeth, when you prove to yourself that you can continue getting back up, it gets easier more and more. It's never easy, I never want to say it's easy, but it gets easier to get back up the more times you get pushed down. So hopefully some of you out there have found this video useful. I understand that times are not exactly good right now in America and I'm hoping that this is something that many of you needed to hear and that I, I can actually be of service to help some of you get over your problems and overcome the difficulties that life may have thrust upon you. So I'm hoping you guys out there get some good use out of what I've just said. And if not, you can just turn on a camera and complain on YouTube. That seems to work just as good.